I am a groupie mom. I have a kid, my oldest kid plays in a band, uh, has for four years now. I've been to Chicago, I've been to um, Florida, I've been to Georgia. Uh, maybe they're going to get famous someday. But we travel around everywhere we can and chase them. Their friends just think it's so awesome that we do this. And I, because they said my parents wouldn't do that for anything. But one of the thrills of my life with that particular kid was the first band he was in when he opened up in Chicago for Toby Keith and Ricochet and then in front of 25,000 people with Diamond Rio. And I was on the very front row, and he was up there playing his drums. And I just love it, and they're good. Y'all can look on their website. It's standard-candle.com. So check them out. How many children do you have? Three boys. And what do the others do? One's a photographer that does all the concerts for around the country. And except he's really in computer engineering, but this is his sideline. And the other one is a kid that's going to be a psychologist with child, child, child psychology. And last summer, he got picked out of 2,500 entries and went and worked a uh, internship with Colin Powell in Washington, D.C. And he was my kid who, in first grade, they told me to put him in a school for special children because he'd never be able to learn. He's on full scholarship. His college has cost us $3.26. The other one's 27000 a year. And, uh, uh, and I don't know, y'all just remember Jeff Purvis, not the race car driver. But uh, I just, I really think he'll end up in politics someday because he hates how the system works so bad. And he was around it enough to um, say, I'd like to make a difference. And he is just all for helping these kids that get lost by the wayside. I don't know which direction that one's gonna go. He's just, he's wide open. So I got three good boys in this day and age, and I don't know what I did right, except I always told them, everything you do has a consequence, so think. And that's all I ever told them. I never told them don't do anything, because I said I probably did it. <laughs> that's all I'm not going to tell you don't. But just know that everything has a consequence, so choose wisely. And I have just been blessed, but boy, I have a ball. Most of the times when Jimmy and I, I've been in no more nightclubs since I turned 50 than I ever did growing up. And we're usually the oldest people in there. And so finally one day I asked the boys, I said, um, does it bother you that we come as much as we do? And they, oh no, mother, our just friends just think it's so cool. And we just have a good time with it. I mean, I get right out there and dance with them and everything else, never even touch beer. I said, you don't have to do that to have fun anymore. I don't want to feel bad the next day. And, uh, but it's just, it's exciting. It's been great watching them grow up. I'm so excited to see all y'all. I got out of the car today. I looked at Debbie. I said, I don't recognize anybody here. <laughs> and once I got up close and could see it and put the pictures on, the, okay, I know who you are now. But it was freaky when I opened that car. <laughs> I, I wasn't in all this last year, so I had had 10 years or however many it was. So anyway, y'all, it's just great to see you. Y'all look so good. Oh, and I said I would ask this question, because I don't remember. Five years, we had a five-year reunion, right? And somebody said they got their check back at the 10-year reunion. So did we not have one at 10 years? And we had one at, we didn't have one at 15. And we had one at 20. So we've had two. So, and then last year was a party. This was a party. Maybe on the 40th, we'll have a full-blown reunion somewhere. I don't think we can go past this. <laughs> this is as much as we can do. Okay, so um, we wanted to know who has changed the least. So look around and see who you nominate for who has changed the least. Marion. Mary, uh, yeah, Marion. Good, Marion, your turn. Come. 
Get up here. You get the tail. Okay. I want to thank you too, Neve and Joe, for having us. This has been great. And uh, anyway, wow, all these faces. <laughs> I live in Kennesaw, Georgia, and I'm divorced, and I've got three precious children. Tara's 31, Heath is 27, Adam, when, you, when they get up that high, you forget how old they are, you know? Adam is 24, I think. And uh, Wesley is my grandson, and he's six, and I have another grandson on the way. And what else? Yeah. Oh, I work at a company called Hewitt. <laughs> 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 and I've been there for nine years and enjoyed immensely. And, and she draws. Draw, yeah. That's my hobby. sketch. People really good. <laughs> really good. So that's me. All right. Good. You want the top rocks or you can get Well, now I hate to cook. Tony, I met, introduced myself to Tony and said, I'm Mary Louise and I don't cook. And that's a problem. We can't go any further. And he said he knew how to cook. So I somehow got stuck with it. But anyway, who likes to cook? I want to... John, you like to cook. Now that's wonderful. No wonder she married you. I learned how to boil water uh, 30 years ago because the guys at Firehall were killing us. Uh, and you know how to cook. Anybody else like to cook? Galloping gourmet. I'm going to choose someone who does. You like to cook, Joy? Good. Come here. I like to eat when somebody else cooks. All right. Tell us about yourself. With your family, your husband, he's Sweet Bill back there, yeah. your children. Well, Sweet Bill, yeah. He's been there with me for 30-something years, and God blessed us with two wonderful children. Amanda's 28, Patrick's 23. Anybody that lives close, go by Lahara's Mexican Grill in Trustful. Love to have you. He's manager and owner of that little fine establishment. And Amanda and her husband, uh, her husband sings with the Imperials Gospel Music Group, and they travel full time, and um, both my grandchildren <laughs> have a little grandson. Almost could be three next week, and a little grandson almost five. Michael and Brantley. They call me from wherever, and I say, "Where are you?" And they'll one of them will say, "Hey, Nana," and I say, "Where are you?" And they'll say, "Oh, I don't know. I'm in some hotel somewhere. <laughs> it's crazy here." <laughs> but they they love uh, singing and having a good time, and. We're very blessed. A great friend of ours last year blessed Bill with a new kidney so that he had a kidney transplant last year and is extremely healthy right now. We're very, very thankful for that. And the greatest blessing is that she's a close friend and I get to see her all the time and told her just last week that I cried on her shoulder because I said just getting to go on a trip without having to worry about Bill. I had to leave early to go and be with my sister before she passed away. And to, not, to be able to leave Bill and not know he, knowing he didn't have to go to those treatments and that he was in good hands. And we give God the glory for that. So, But I do love to cook. I even took a, a real life cooking class one time <laughs> at, the, um, at the landmark in Oni Honor. Gourmet jelly beans. Well, now we're going to get in your personal life. Who's gotten married the most recently? Well, you know what's going to come next after that. Who's, and who's gotten married the most recently? Who's been married uh, less than 10 years? Less than 8 years? Less than 7 years? 6 years? How long have you been married? It'll be 5 years July. All right. 5 years. 4 years? Three years. I guess I win that. I've been married not two years yet. But I don't want it. We'll give it to somebody else. Well, was, okay, so who's recently divorced? I thought she knew what the next one was going to be. Who's been more divorced recently? Nobody. Andy left. 
Any Lisa Lee divorce? Well, who's been divorced the longest? No, okay. No, Mary. Well, now, who is dating? I, yeah. Well, we had this ring pop for you, but we've already talked to you. We, but we might still give you this. It's got a ring after you suck the candy off the body pop. There's a ring left. It was for you. We said, yeah, go give it to him. We're going to give it to him. It's, it's stuck on this nice little lollipop that you can enjoy. and Cute. Now, somebody last year came with a date. It was Floyd Hubbard came with a date. And, and you guys are, got some cute looking dates. So you got one cute one too. Well, we had another one with the ring, but um, what were we gonna give them? Who's been married the longest? Yeah. Who's been married to this person that you're still married to? Not cumulative, the longest. So who's been married 30 years? One, two. Who's been married 31 years? 32 years? 33 years? Man, I got people waving still back there. 34 years? 35 years? 36 years? 37 years? Anybody over 36 years? Golly, that is wonderful. I think we get it perfect. Sandlin, give her a clap. 36 years. Yay. She's our guy. Well, now we're going to let her pick somebody. i got a plan here. Now, I'm, gonna, since I'm not going to give you this ring, and you get to pick somebody to come tell about themselves. Pick someone to come up here, because we've heard about you. So we're going to have everybody come up here eventually. Nikki Little. I want to know what he's been doing. Yeah. Okay, Nikki. The sunglasses. Nikki Little. Did you have the heart? Were you the valedictorian of our class? Thank gosh. <laughs> Who was? Patty I knew that. They didn't even let me close to those clubs. Here, get on this side. You can hear me. Patty Flanagan. Patty Flanagan, was it? Marvin. Patty Marvin. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> Charlotte Massey. She hadn't answered my email. She works at UIB. I have her email address. If any of the rest of you haven't answered my email, I want you to go home and say, Dear Mary Louise, I'm answering your email. Here. Here you go. Tell us about yourself. Well, I didn't go to class enough the last year to be valedictorian, I guess. I skipped two months. I uh, have two kids. I have two sons, and uh, my wife passed away in 89. We're remarried, and we have a, a daughter. Martha has a daughter. I have one son in Boston, uh, has two grandchildren. I have another son in San Diego who's not married. And Mary Kay is in Montgomery. She's not married. So that's kind of our family life. Uh, we're just waiting. Hopefully someday there'll be more grandkids. But we're running out of time. We're taking that location. Yeah, we're taking that <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. You're cute. And you live in Trustville area. We do. Oh, yay. Right. Raise your hand if you live in the Trustville area. Greater Trustville. Raise your hand high. I want to see who lives in the Greater Trustville area. I think that's wonderful. I wish I'd known y'all were there back when I was visiting. You get to choose someone because we've heard from you and you got the cutest date. So you get to choose someone to... Mike Parker. Mike Parker. Come up here and tell us everybody about your family. <laughs> Last time I saw you, your daughter was going by in a cute little car, and you were going, where is she going? She is so cute. She's trying to find us. I know. <laughs> cute daughter in a cute red car. Well, I got my wife, Laura, back there in the blue. It's Laura Parker. I met her when Laura Shoemaker. And I met her 72. We got married in 74. I got a boy that's 23, his name's Forrest Lee, and a girl named Ashley, and she's 20. And he's a senior at Auburn, and she's a, I don't know what she is at Jeff State, but she's a sophomore. Uh, we're going to have to be throwing these things in a minute. <laughs> All right, so um, we will, might choose somebody. 
Oh, yes. I, I want to give him the cute award. <laughs> See, so, oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I married, my wife's name is Rhonda. She's a flight attendant. That's why she's not able to be here today. She really regrets that. I'd also like to thank our gracious host for everything that you've provided for us today. It's a beautiful setting and uh, really appreciate it. And I'd I like to come back again and we ever have a get together here myself. I uh, spent 33 years with Delta Airlines, uh, retired this past December. Uh, I'm employed now by the Atlanta Falcons. I've had a relationship with them for a number of years. I have two daughters. One is 27, uh, graduate of the University of Georgia. And I have another daughter that is 15. Kind of spread it out a little bit. But uh, they're wonderful children. Uh, the oldest one is a school teacher in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, that's about it. Right. I do a lot of traveling, of course, uh, formerly with airlines. So. That's great. That's great. I love it. Give me the sour ones. Sour ones. You know, we asked last year, we had a lot of takers on this one last year, who is single and never going to date again, and they've given up? Who's single and they haven't given up? There's a few. We had some sour worms. <laughs> No, it wasn't you that took it last year. Well, I don't know who's going to get the Sour Worm Award. What, or do any of y'all particularly feel sour about anything that you want to share with us here? Well, Edith, come tell, and you've told us. Ann, no, come on, you tell us about yourself. Yours, I think this ought to be the opposite because you have the sweetest look on your face. Come over here and tell us about what you do. Really? Look how sweet she looks. Uh-uh. Here, get it, get over here from an, out from in front of that speaker. It'll bother you. I have lived in Trustville all my life except for one year. I was born in Trustville, so I'm a true Trustvillian. I work at Southern Research Institute on Southside, and I supervise her for a copy center. We produce the research reports that are developed at Southern Research Institute. It's a very interesting job and very changing. My job at Southern Research has been a constant learning experience and I have been there 26 <laughs> years now. And uh, it's, it's really been an experience for me and my husband was there 20 of those years. I have a daughter that is 30, she lives in Mobile, no grandchildren. And I go to the same church that I went to when I was so small, I can't remember how old I was. <laughs> so I am truly a Trustvillian, and the school means a lot to me, even today, since my daughter graduated in the same stadium that we graduated, along with Linda's daughter, and that was very important to me. So to all of you, I'm glad I'm here, and I appreciate you opening your home up. This has been a pleasure. Give her those things. Here, this is the Sour Gums Award for the sweetest looking person here. Oh, how sweet. God, Trustful, all those years. Now, can you tell us one thing? How the sink holes and what, why they cut down the trees? They cut down the trees because they were diseased and they were dangerous. And they're going to replace them with something. They're going to put some more trees uh -huh. in there. Uh huh. The sink holes, I've heard many different stories about the sink holes. And one story is because of the water table and the yeah. use of the water where we had such low water tables in future. When I was first dating Tony, I said, let me show you Trustville, Alabama, and I brought him to Trustville, and we rode up and down, and I said, I lived in this house, and Marion lived in that house, and we stopped, and I cried, because my mom and dad weren't there, and Tony said, um, do you realize how ahead of time this little city was? No, I don't. He said, well, number one, you had underground wires for all the street lights. You had sidewalks and curbs. This was built in 1930-something through the uh, 100 Days of Restoration by the CCC. And it had streets and curbs and all you urban people, I know you don't know what we grew up, we had, a, we had an athletic director for us when we were here. Lynn Warman and a bunch of us swam on the swimming team when we were this age. We played softball, they wouldn't let us play baseball, Lynn and I wanted to, but they had this rule. And all the boys couldn't swim on game day 
And but we had all those. Uh, we had a library. We went up there and jumped on the trampoline. Had Gimp, all in one square square mile, built in 1933. So it's really amazing that this little gym came from so long ago. And I hate to see the sinkholes are bigger than the city. Okay, pick someone, Ann. Yes, you got something. Remember, you had a flashback. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Because. And we all learned how to swim in the Cahaba River. That was before the swimming pool got there. That's and we all lined up at Miss Taggart's house and got our shots. That's right. <laughs> we sure did, and we. Uh, it was. Um, Slag Heap Village was an Indian village, and they actually mined slag there before they built this in, like, 1933 or something like that. My mother got... It was... Um, Slag Heap Village was an Indian village, and they actually mined slag there before they built this in, like, 1933 or something like that. My mother got brought out there, and she said, I'm not staying out here. Well, they died out there, so they were there. Who's next? Let's see. Who... Pick someone, and Point to someone who hadn't been up. Well, I'll pick someone. Ricky Searle, come. Now, this is some man. He, he will he, email me. All right, here you go. I like, no. Auburn Band, tell us about it. Okay. Uh, well... The reason I've got the shirt on Auburn Band, I've got a daughter down there that's uh, in the flag course. She marches for the football team. We, I tell everybody we quit going to football games down at Auburn because of the kids, um, you know, having to do things on the weekends and couldn't go. And now we're going back to games for the same reason, because of the kids. But uh, I left school and went to Jeff State for a while. Tried to get out of the draft by going, going there for a while. Goofed off. Grades dropped. Was going to get drafted anyway. Went into the Navy Reserve. Uh, thought I was getting out of Vietnam as we watched the people getting their orders. Everybody was going to Vietnam or somewhere close. And I, out of about 20 people the day I got my, my traveling orders, I, I think there were six of us that got Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ships were getting ready to go to Vietnam. So uh, uh, I spent my two years part in Vietnam, part in Hawaii. We were in home port, so that was good. Married an underclassman uh, while I was still in the service, which was not a good idea. And uh, that lasted about a year, year and a half. And then <laughs> I went off to Auburn. I, I went back to Jeff State and then transferred to Montevallo, went to, went to Auburn. And uh, when I got my divorce, I dropped out of school for a while. Finally came back. I uh, met Liz down there. And uh, she was my encouragement to stay in school. And so fi finally finished Auburn the week before I turned 30. Now, that was depressed. And people talk about the, the, the birthday that bothers them the most. Well, mine was my 30th because there were kids in school down there that were barely 20, and I just turned 30 when I got out of that place. But uh, we've got three kids. Uh, Beth's 21. She's going to Gadsden State now. I'm talking about going to Auburn, so get ready for some more of that. And uh, uh, Sandy's already down there. She's finished her second semester. And John's a sophomore. And, well, he's a big junior next year in high school, and he plays in the Asheville uh, high, school marching, high School Marching Band. Small school. They had uh, a graduating ceremony last night. It's 69 people, that, uh, seniors that graduated. Their band this year went to uh, London, England. We got to go with John to the, to London with his band, and that was a real, real great trip. Uh, out of that, because of 9/11, uh, they, you know, there weren't that many that wanted to take a plane trip over there. We, we wound up marching. 18 people were the smallest band there, <laughs> but. Uh, but one of the best. They did a, they did a great job. Y'all are good parents. Good supportive parents. Pick somebody. Mm. How much candy do we have left? Seven? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Marvin. How about Marvin? Marv. <laughs> Marvin. Marvin Champion. I went to Irwin for two years and Hewitt Trustful for a year and a half. So no more Irwin people than I do Hewitt. But uh, I did go to Hewitt in the 10th grade, and then my parents moved to New Orleans, and I was there for uh, a year and a half and came back to Hewitt 
in, in January of our senior year. So I did uh, graduate <laughs> with the class of 66. Although y'all didn't know for all these years <laughs> that I did, because I the first uh, time I heard about a reunion was uh, a little less than a year ago. But uh, I retired from the Air Force in 1994 after 23 years. Uh, I'm married to Pam from uh, Tri-Cities, Alabama, Florence, Tuscumbia area. And uh, we settled in Warner Robins, Georgia, which is near Macon, Georgia. And um, since I retired, I've had a job uh, with a defense contractor for a while. And then I didn't work for a while. And then here lately, I just started teaching uh, math and physics at a technical college in the area. And we have two sons. I've uh, been married to Pam for uh, 32 years next month. Uh, two sons, one in Chicago, one in California. Both unmarried, no grandchildren. Pray for us. It's Ann's fault. Uh, I've been married to Betty Ligon for 33 years. I have one daughter, Christy. She's an attorney. I'm very, very proud of her. And I uh, have no grandchildren yet. And I'm still in trustful, too. Been in there most all my life. <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh huh. Now, I'm going to tell you who's called more people. Now, Marion is the, the person who, who does all the, the clerical work. And I'm the person who keeps the data. And Neve is the person who is keeping us going and inspiring us and finding a lot of people and opening her home. Janice McClung has called more people on a hint. If somebody said, I think we can find so-and-so here, I would email it to Janice and she would call them. She call, I bet it, she called 100, 200 phone numbers. No, Charles Brock, we hadn't found him yet. Calling this person, hadn't found him yet. Lynn has a story about follow, calling Charles Brock. Well, uh, Charles Brock uh, evidently he was Tommy Brock, he's one of his older brothers, and uh, he married Pat Leatherwood. And called three different times, left messages. Every time, please give me a telephone number, email address, address, anything. Or, here's all my numbers, tell them to call me, whatever. Never got a return call. Well, don't know. some folks don't want to be found. I guess not. <laughs> but Janice knows. <coughs> oh, well, I have uh, two grown sons, 33 and um, 31. Um, they both graduated from Hewitt Trustful High School. Um, so I most of the time lived in uh, that end of town. We came from, uh, I came from Irwin, as uh, many of you did. Um, so uh, I was married for 15 years the first time, and uh, my husband, like many of you, took uh, uh, a trip with a uh, one 20 years younger <laughs> and uh, left me alone for a good long time to raise two boys by myself, which was, uh, it was, it was terrible. But. Uh, with the, the grace of God, I made it. Um, I met Steve um, in a church setting in um, 1990, and we were married in 1992, and um, he's the most wonderful man in, that's ever been in my life, and uh, I love him with all my heart, and I thank God every day that he's uh, there with me. And uh, Geneva, I think so. I'd still call you Geneva because I always called you Geneva. <laughs> I can't get used to Neva. But uh, I thank uh, you and your husband so much for asking us to come up here and providing the place. I know it takes a lot of work to do that. And uh, um, as far as calling all these folks, I really enjoyed that. I talked to a lot of, of, uh, of your parents uh, trying to find you. And uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, Steve was great. Uh, he was in there working on his computer. He's uh, into computers. I live in, I'm into computers, and we have uh, two offices in our home with a bathroom in between, so it's like we holler at each other all the time down the hall. <laughs> and um, um, it's just, it was a lot of fun trying to find everyone. So thank you all. <laughs> we can't thank you enough. Some of the people right here were found by her. So let's see. Who hadn't had a turn to come up here? Jimmy Harlow, 
Come up here. Jimmy, we got Terry and Diane. Oh, you can just tell it all now. <laughs> Well, um, Larry and I lived in Grayson Valley for 23 years. Um, we've got a daughter that's 35 and a son that's 31, three grandchildren. And um, two and a half years ago, our son moved to Hawaii, so Larry and I both quit our jobs, locked up the house, and went out there to stay with them for a while. <laughs> stayed like almost two months. And when we came back, he had to go back to work, but I stayed home. <laughs> uh, we have a famous nephew in our family, Jeff Cook from the group Alabama. So we get to have a lot of fun going to Fort Payne. So uh, that's about it. Sounds like you have a fun life. <laughs> I think you're a risk taker. <laughs> Wish I could quit my job and go somewhere to Hawaii for two months. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Terry, you want to come tell about yourself? You want to, I, I, or you can sit there and talk loud enough, whichever. <laughs> Uh, right after graduation, uh, I went into the Marines, and uh, over in Vietnam I was wounded and uh, later retired with a disability from the service, and uh, after that I uh, spent a few years at Jeff State, then went to uh, Sanford University, graduated there in 72, and uh, got two grown children, and uh, I've been married since 1982 to my wife, Juanita. And uh, I'm, I'm retired now. That's pretty much the coverage I guess. Good. We're glad you're here. I'm glad you made it back from Nam, and thank you for doing that. Patsy? Oh, no. Yes, come on. Come on, come on. Well, you can sit there if you want to. You're going to be fine. This isn't a crowd. These are friends that we just forgot. <laughs> well, my, one of my memories from, from school that I can't really get out of my mind was my mom graduated from Trustful 20 years before I did. And I had Miss Violet Tyler, y'all all remember her, Mama did too, for Home Ec. The first year Miss Tyler had Home Ec with, with me, she put me with Mom. And um, her story about Mama was, and I'm going to say a little ugly word, she said, Mama fixed something, and Miss Tyler had to taste it. And Mama said, how, how is it? She said, well, it tastes just about like shit smells. Miss <laughs> 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 Tyler, Mom wasn't one of her favorite people, but... Uh, <laughs> and then I married the first time. <clears throat> you didn't give anything for the how many times been? Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. We have <laughs> this measuring type. For the long <laughs> string of being married. Three. 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 I've been married three. No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then I feel so bad. Well, the first time it was my senior year in high school, and it really, excuse me, pissed me off. Because they made me go to the back of the line because I was an A up front before I married. Right at two weeks before we graduated, they put me to S's, and I thought, well, I'd have waited a little bit longer if I'd have known. <laughs> well, we were married two and a half years, and uh, then we divorced, no children, and then uh, married uh, my son. Well, I had my son after we married, but um, we were married, uh, Eddie and I were married eight and a half years and we divorced, and then I married the cook. <laughs> Jim and I have been married uh, 23 years? About 23 years, 23 happy years. Um, I had breast cancer surgery and lost my breast in 99. I'm a breast cancer survivor. Um, <laughs> it was early stages. Uh, my lip notes were clear. We went through the motion. I had to do the chemo, and I couldn't have made it without my rock there. He, he was right there with me. And we've been living in Georgia. Um, did I say that? How long have we been in Georgia? About 20 years. And um, uh, we live at right past Stone Mountain, Georgia. We live there. And uh, I'm sort of pushing for the next couple of years moving back home. 
so that's about it. You get about as much encouragement as I get. All right, now who is this back there that's been married five years? Five times? You. We probably heard from you. Okay, well, we won't drag that up. Uh, Johnny Hawkins, come here. Where, where is he? He's back there. Yeah, I hugged him a while ago. He's still chewing that right. chewing gum. Too. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, after Hewitt, I went to uh, Jeff State for two years. Got drafted there the last quarter and went to Vietnam. Spent a year there. And then uh, in 68, I married uh, Janie Liner, which was uh, Neva's sister. And uh, we were married for 33 years. Uh, we have uh, two children, two daughters, and, uh, and two grandchildren. Uh, one daughter is 26, the other one is 23. Uh, the grandchildren are eight and five. And we live in North Carolina. I've been there since 1972. I'm in the car business there. Been with the same company for nearly 30 years. So, just, uh, uh, that's it. I lost Janie in January. So, but other than that, I'm doing fine. Look at somebody. Who do I know? Now let me, I'm looking who I, Sandra Pennell, we haven't heard from you. Come on. Come on down. Tell us your life history. I used to take zeros in school, so I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> but this, uh, don't you think you've, you've come out a lot? <laughs> yes, I love to shop. I am a shopper. Uh, we just moved to Trustville. We've been there for about a year. I have three grandbabies and two sons. And uh, I have been married three times. And if this doesn't work, that's it. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Okay. Um, I really live kind of just a, a normal, everyday life. Charlotte and I work together at Bruno's. Uh, we run the service center. so. If y'all come over there to buy groceries, do not come to the service center to buy your groceries, okay? <laughs> Go through the registers. <laughs> um, I don't really have anything exciting. I, I lived in Germany for two years. I guess that was exciting, and I got to go to Paris. My oldest son was born in Germany, so, um, and he lives here in Birmingham, and my youngest son lives in Atlanta, and they're all precious. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Louie. Louie. The truck. Your turn. Yeah. We're I'm, I just have to go and row. Well, I've rowed a whole bunch since I left school. I want you to know. Tell them what you did in school. Do they remember? Everything bad. Great trouble. I was constantly, I was the aggravator of everything. Oh, Reuben Robinson used to raise cane with me all the time. And uh, I came back from the uh, gymnasium one time, and he walked by and he asked me, he said, hey, Louie. And I just looked at him and said, hey, Reuben. He, <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, you didn't show me any respect. And I looked at him, I said, hell, if you ain't proud of your name, I'm not either. <laughs> Last day, he wanted to carry me up there and beat me. <laughs> they don't do that anymore. Uh, but they used to. I used to get it once a week, and Mama used to beat me every week for sure. It didn't make no difference what I did. I got one once a week. But, uh, well, I got married the first time, stayed married 13 years. Uh, married a girl out of Springfield and then worked up in Gaston for 13, 14 years after that. Then stayed single, run around for a long time. Then I met my wife, Kay, and we've been married for 14 years after that. Uh, 
I've got one granddaughter, uh, and that's about it. I mean, I own step granddaughter. Step granddaughter. Step granddaughter. Step -granddaughter. Still don't know what to call. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly, I own two businesses, but the bank owns it. I have to send them the damn money every time. <laughs> what kind of businesses? I got one was a wood chipper industry, uh, for the saw mill and paper mill industry, and I got a uh, fastener company that sells nuts and bolts and so forth. So. But I'm just a dumb old country boy just trying to make it. And I don't know if I'm ever going to make it to my Have you calmed down any? What? Calm no. down? <laughs> no, I'm still, I'm real. Okay. It's pretty quiet now. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Kay kind of keeps me in line. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, good, Kay. You've done a good job on this morning. Yeah, you need a hand. You need a hand. Barbara Robinson. went back to work. I can't. And I had to retire and go back to work. What is this? Well, you retire. We're too young. And I retired. I worked for Social Security for 30 years. I took two years off. It was great. And then I got bored. I mean, I just admit I got bored. So I went back to work for, I live in Aniana. It's pronounced Aniana. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I'm working for a small law firm there, so it's brand new. Uh, I married in the first time in 67. My husband was in the Marine Corps. We moved to, we married after he came back from Vietnam. And uh, moved to North Carolina, came back, and then I divorced after uh, 12 years. Had one daughter from that marriage. And then I remarried uh, three years later uh, to Jim Sumter. And he has a car dealership, Valley Ford Mercury, in Aniana. That's why we're there. And we've been married 20 years. And with that, I got two more children. Jimmy's 31. Jennifer, my oldest daughter, is... No, Jimmy's 32. Jennifer's 31. And the youngest one is 28. And I have two grand boys. One's 13 and one's 8. And they're great. And my life has been great. And it's so nice to see everybody. Good, good. Did you know that Mike Carter's wife has an antique shop in Aniana? Mike Carter? Mike Carter's wife has an antique shop, and she goes up to Aniana every day to her antique shop, I hear. Now, what else do we hear about Mike Carter? He had a heart attack, and he's getting over it? Are you talking about the picket fence? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Mike's, uh, yeah. Mike's had Mike's? a heart attack recently. I didn't know that was Mike's wife. Uh -huh. Mike Carter, yeah. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, and I knew he had a heart attack. I love that place. And he's yeah. better. I hear, by the grapevine. That's pure gossip. Oh, well, I'm Oh, yeah. Tell it. What? Well, you know, this is a small town. And what I heard was that they were going to buy what's called an Arbor House there. It's a building. It's an old house. And they can burn it and sell it for $8 million. And they were going to uh, buy that building. And they were both going to work in there with the antiques. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's just a Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I'm going around this way, and Jimmy Box is back there hiding, so it's your turn, Jimmy. <laughs> well, Tony got his ear. He had to listen. <laughs> well, mine about the same as everyone else. I haven't done anything really spectacular, but uh, uh, out of school, I just went to work. Most of my most of my life's been spent in kind of technical type work. I just kind of migrated to that. 
But uh, in 1972, I married my wife, Hilda. That's her sitting back there in the back. We have three children, uh, an older daughter, Christy. Uh, she's married. She teaches the fourth grade at Montevallo High School. Um, Montevallo Elementary, excuse me. And uh, she's expecting our first grandchild in this December, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, I have one son, Daryl, and a younger daughter, Angel. Uh, Daryl works with me at uh, National Computer Print. And Angel is a insurance broker for uh, fireworks types displays, the uh, the large industrial fireworks that they put on for like um, like the the Olympics and all of those type of things. Those I didn't even think about it until she got that job. If somebody insures all that. She works in that field. But uh, my wife and I have been married for 30 years this July, and. Uh, that's pretty much it. But I would like to thank everyone that's had a part in bringing this about. It's been a lot of fun. I was looking forward to it from the time I was contacted. So uh, hope we can do it again sometime. Good, good, good. Susan, come on. You can stand there. That's fine. What do you do there now? I uh, work for Fisker Dyes and Chemicals. We sell dyes to the textile industry. Uh huh. Taught school for a while, but then took time off to raise my children. Well, good. Come see me on the weekend. I know, because we're not. The I couldn't. Why couldn't I find a name tag, a picture for you? Why weren't you in the part of the annual? I, I felt the What happened? <laughs> Tell us about it. graduate in 67 to get that one stupid night because back then you didn't get to go and make up a, a credit like you can do now oh so i never get included in 67 and i actually went with everybody in 66 well you're with us now <laughs> <laughs> please fill out a bio form All and right. and for everybody sign in on the sign in sheet and don't put something that we won't recognize like somebody's your husband's name or something. And um, fill out a bio form and put it in the folder. And if you want to order any pictures of last year, this year, or any other things, there's some order forms over there. Now, have I missed anybody? Kind of a challenge in a minute. <laughs> a lot of you knew my husband, Neil Gray. He passed, he was three years ahead of us when he graduated. He passed away in 92. We have three children. Uh, one is a teacher and orchestra director. One is an um, uh, aircraft, has his a and license. My third one is 26. He's a diver, a commercial diver. In 1992, my husband, Neil, died. And three years later, I met Bob LeClaire. We were both widowed. And we have been married soon to be five years now. And he's a retired customs agent. So, and I, my challenge is, we're talking about all these grandchildren and marriages and this and that and the other. Uh, we have nine children, 14 and a half grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Go away, Bob. Take a picture of Bob. Oh, he was the longest bunch of folks. Except for those kids that are there. That don't mean we have to compete for next year. Has anybody else got something to say? A little bit longer to work. That's enough, Marvin. Uh, well, we have lots of dessert left in there and food, too. So I think we need to go and uh, eat it. I'll eat, but I don't want to have lunch all week. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all have a dessert together and um, just mingle and talk about what we've been talking about. Now, we kind of got bogged down with the, with the raffling. So... Um, I don't know what we're going to do with these things. Uh, they were for children and grandchildren that go to Hewitt. But um, we'll put them back there, and somebody can just throw something in the donation bag if you want to take it home as a souvenir. That's what we'll do with all this back there. And it's been fun, and uh, you can have the program next year. And we'll have it. Debbie can tell us when we're going to her house. And uh, I'm glad you're all here, and it's, and it's good to get to know you again because... 
Y'all are a good group, group of people. I like you. Yeah, all turned out good. Yeah, you can give yourself a hand. Now get up and let's go eat this dessert. Before y'all go, thank you.